Hello, jazz piano fans and freaks. This is Dave Frank. I'm coming to you from my studio in New York City. We have a blizzard here today. I thought it might be interesting to share with you some concepts that I've been using in my own playing and my own studies on how to improve my piano sound and the separation of voices within an improvisation. When you hear great classical pianists and jazz pianists play, you'll always hear how they can bring out the melody very strongly and everything else will be down in volume. So there'll be a very different touch and sound between the melody that they're playing, maybe up here, and then everything else below. Okay. Now, I was very interested in learning how to do that. And so I contacted a classical teacher and player by the name of Irina Lankova, who I work with on Skype every other week. Uh, she lives in Belgium. And she's a terrific player and teacher. And I contacted her in, to try to find out some classical techniques that I could use in my jazz playing and a lot in my jazz ballad playing, slow playing, to help control the sound and bring out certain voices and bring down certain other voices. So she actually was able to show me a lot of interesting concepts, which I'm working on applying to my playing. I thought it might be interesting for maybe one millionth of the population out there who's working on similar things to, uh, to, to get a flavor for the kind of thing I was working on in my own playing. So what I did is I, I'm studying with Irina and uh, uh, over the last few months, uh, she's presented a number of concepts to me. So I wrote these concepts, there are nine of them on this little sticky, and I just put the sticky right in front of my face on the piano. It's a great technique for practicing. So I take a tune, in this case it'll be an original ballad called Rousseau's World, and I'm trying to use these classical techniques to improve the sound and the separation of the voices. And I found it's very, very useful to do. Uh, when I used to talk to uh, Charlie Bonacus and uh, Lenny Tristano about how the great players played and how their sound was so great and how it was so controlled, they always inevitably said, well, these people have studied classical music. So I decided at the age of 61 to give it a little try and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So anyway, I'm gonna share some of these concepts and I think this might be interesting to one or two guys out there and ladies. <laughs> and if it's interesting to you, it'll probably be very interesting. And if it's not, it probably won't be interesting at all. But anyway, uh, the first concept that Irina taught me, which was great, which was to send the notes you're playing out from the piano a conscious distance. For example, if I play a note from here on the piano, I'm playing a C, I'll, uh, I'll point the camera at the piano in a little bit. I can imagine that that note is just staying very close to my finger. The sound is not traveling very far. But I can also imagine that that note is traveling five feet and is st uh, sitting in the air. I'm sending this note out about five feet in the air and letting it hang in the air. That has a very different sound than if I imagine that I'm keeping the note very close to my finger. So when you have multiple voices in a tune, you can imagine that the notes that you want to bring out, or the melody line, let's say, can be sent out from your fingers four or five feet. And the notes that you want to be lower can be hanging out just right around your fingers. Okay? I'm going to turn the camera uh, to the piano, and I'll see if I can demonstrate some of this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I found this concept really, really great. It really changed everything for me. So here's a little uh, beginning of this tune, R Rousseau's World. Now the question is, if you don't consciously bring anything out, then in effect you bring nothing out. So the way most people, or the way I would use to play the piano, would be to play the whole thing as a block, 
like this. Okay, that sounds all right, but nothing like if you listen to the great pianists, what their sound sounds like. So trying to do uh, what Arena showed me, I tried to bring the melody consciously out about four or five feet so it's hanging in the air over the piano. And I tried to bring the other notes, imagine that they were just hanging out, right, the sound was just hanging around my fingers. And when you put the two concepts together, you're going to get a separation in the sound. So hopefully, let's try it. I'm going to imagine the top note melody is going to go out and the rest of the accompanying notes will stay very close, local to the piano keyboard. That was pretty good. I think it was a little bit better. So the top note is usually where the melody is, although it can be anywhere. I'm imagining that going soaring out over the piano four or five feet. And the other notes, uh, just being real close to the keyboard, not going that far out. See how we get the separation in the top note. That's very different than if you played it all together. There I'm not trying to bring anything out. It kind of all sounds, sounds like a smoosh. But this way you have more separation. And I found that it's really uh, possible to sustain that separation over uh, a long piece if you just imagine the different uh, places that you're placing the notes. So I'm placing the melody four or five feet away. And then I'm placing the other notes very close. Now it's kind of a trick because with something like this, here we have six notes and the melody is just one note. The other notes, we have five notes and we're trying to make the five note that accompanies the melody to be much softer than the one note of the melody. If you didn't try to do that, it would all come out the same or the company would be louder because there's more notes there. And you'd have all these notes popping out in the middle of the keyboard. So with this technique, which is sending the notes out to different lengths, to different uh, degrees from the keyboard, I'm thinking I'm generating the note from the keyboard and it's going out four or five feet, or it's not, it's staying very close. Okay. I think we got a nice separation there. So thank you very much, Arena. I thought uh, you guys might find this interesting. This is the first of what we'll call Deep in the Shed, and it's just an exploration of how a lifetime of study and practice can go into what you hear, the jazz and the jazz pianists and the other jazz musicians that we hear and we love, what goes into it. I'm sure that everyone who has practiced and got to a certain degree has gone through things like this for many years. I've been doing this for about 40 years working on it and I'm nowhere near satisfied. But anyway, I'm having fun and uh, if you have any questions, write to me at DaveFrankJazz.com. Blessings and keep swinging from New York. <laughs>